yarn lovers, it's Gary and I'm coming to you from my living room in Vancouver, Canada. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Today is Tuesday, September the 1st, 2020 and this is video number 71. So first off the bat, I've got to apologize if you hear construction noises outside of my living room. Uh, we've had a couple of weeks worth of digging up the front road, they're replacing pipes or something I'm not too sure what they're doing out there but they've been around for about two weeks and I think we'll have them around for a few more weeks to come so I thought I'd jump in here real quick to catch you up on what I've been up to in the course of the last four days since I uploaded my previous video uh, where I was giving you all of my Deramore's US uh, loot. Uh, so yeah, this is going to be a podcast that talks about what I've been making, my finished works, works in progress, a little bit of dilemma that I had with an, a sweater that I was building and how I rectified the problem. So I've got a little snippet from the time back when I thought everything was great and I thought I'd give some tips on the sweater until now where I've had a bit more of a think about the sweater and how I've rectified the problem. So yes, I'd be happy to actually share that with you. I've got some happy mail and I was visiting with a family member who donated, do, donated a generous uh, gift of yarn to me uh, that she had been hoarding at her parents' place, uh, but since has been told to, uh, I guess, clear out the storage facility. And uh, so she found all this yarn. So I want to showcase that as well. So if you're just happening upon this channel for the very first time, hi, my name's Gary, I'm the host of Urban Yarn, and I put this channel together to talk about all of my yarn adventures. So that is anything knit, crochet that I do, uh, yarn acquisition, so if I go shopping online or in store, so I give you my honest opinions about like what I'm, what I'm purchasing, and also a little bit of hand dyeing of yarn. I haven't done that for a while, so maybe in the, uh, I guess my next purchase of bare yarn or whatever I do have, I will uh, include another episode later down the way of hand dyed yarn, so I'm kind of missing that. I really like it. So if that kind of stuff floats your boat, then stick around and uh, think about giving me a thumbs up, which is the uh, like symbol, which is a thumb up down below, or uh, think about subscribing and uh, joining me amongst my fiber friends. And to my fiber friends returning, welcome. It's great to see you. Welcome back, I should say. And uh, yeah, so let's get stuck into the yarn goodness. So what we have here is a crocheted item that I finished. And I did this uh, yesterday. It is the Fiber Spider tutorial uh, that he does online, which I'll link down below. Any, any tutorials or any patterns, uh, if you press on the downward arrow to, or show more of the show notes, you'll see all of the links to what I referred to uh, if I'm talking about channels or patterns. So Fiber Spider is a YouTuber out there who, I think everyone knows, but if not, uh, please go check him out. He has so many tutorials online and they're easy, easy to follow. Uh, he's just a very skilled uh, teacher in that regard. So this is his waffle, I think it's called the waffle stitch hat tutorial. And I absolutely had a lot of fun with this. Uh, so it's in this lovely blue color, like a mid blue, I would say and uh, it shows all of the waffles. Uh, it's this lattice work of cables that run down from the peak here uh, in a circular fashion. So it looks a little bit like a spoke of a, of a bicycle wheel and uh, it has all these, uh, also the cross sections here that make a little grid. So a couple of rows uh, here are the, uh, I believe it's the back post, uh, double crochet that I used a couple of rows in uh, just to finish it off to give it a, a nice bulky rim. Really, really like that. And super, super easy. So what I used with that was part of my mum's stash that she sent me from Australia. It's the Pandy yarn. And uh, I used the uh, Carnival 8-ply, which is a uh, worsted weight yarn, and or a number four. And I, I used almost, I would say, three quarters of this uh, hank. And what do we have here in the 100 grams? So I'm probably going to guess at maybe 
70 grams was was used for the uh, for the hat uh, not quite enough to make two but uh, I can use this scrap for a blanket or something like that afterwards so I did it again <laughs> the same pattern but using different uh, weight yarn and different yarn so I held together in this one the Karen Latte cake, so the nice kind of furry yarn that's represented here in this waffle stitch hat uh, is the Lat Karen Latte cake. And I paired it with a sock weight yarn to get the interesting effects here of the blacks and beige and creams that run through the, uh, the stitch work as well. So that's it up close and further away it looks like this. I will put this one on quickly. It is quite a bigger hat because of the nature of the yarn being a bit bulkier. So there we go. Really interesting construction. It reminds me of the Pantheon in Rome a little bit with all of those uh, little it's uh, like an inside dome that has an eye at the top of the, the ceiling and all of these little squares that go get smaller and smaller as it goes up to the eye of the dome. I like that architecturally. It's, it's quite an interesting, an interesting make. Uh, it, it's a quick make, so it takes maybe around two to three hours uh, to, to finish up. And uh, that one I had made... Um, yesterday as well. So I did the two hats yesterday. Uh, so this is what the carrot cake looks like when you buy it in a cake. And the name of this one is Grey Shock. So I still have a lot left over. And I think I'm going to use this one up in a scarf uh, now that I've made the, the hat. I've been looking at that pattern for a while, so I really wanted to get into it. The sock weight that I'm using uh, in conjunction with the latte cake is from a German supplier of yarn, and it is called the, uh, I want to say Ross, Ross Platz and Wilmeiser, or Ross Platz Wilmeiser, and the collection of their one is Nobody is Perfect, like myself in using or pronouncing German uh, names like this. And uh, the colorway is Spice Schwammel. So the other thing that I finished was another fiber spider pattern. And uh, it was one that he made a tutorial of called the Rivulet Shawl. And I believe the designer is Purple Iguana. And I'll link her, uh, I guess, resource down below as well, as well as the tutorial that Fiber Spider does of the Rivulet Shawl. And here it is here. I think I did maybe 24 rows in my last uh, podcast, but uh, now it's completed and I've used up the whole cake. So look at that. I'm going to try and get it all in. It's amazing and so sheer. It's um, like a super fine number one weight yarn and um, just delightfully light. Uh, so you could wear something like this f for a garment that that is for the summer as well It's uh, it's not really designed to keep warm thin But it does shield you if you have like had uh, enough Sun uh, on your skin if you have like a bare shoulders you could uh, Totally wrap this around you for a little bit of uh, shade uh, It's really really a nice pattern. I love the droplets, of, which I guess is why it's called the rivulet uh, shawl, uh, that streak in each of the quadrangles. Now, Fiber Spider does a great job. He tells you uh, if you want to make three quadrangles, you will have a uh, flat surface at the top. Uh, so from the point, it works up to the, the uh, edging. And with the four quadrants, you get a nice little V shape uh, kind of a peak in the middle, uh, sorry, it's an indentation in the middle, and then it peaks up at both of the, of the ends. And if you want to make it a three uh, quadrant shape, you then have a flat top line, and it goes down to a flat bottom line then as well. Uh, so yeah, this one has the four, love it, the gradation of the center to the edging 
was a beautiful soft slow gradation so it went from a light white to a ultramarine blue and just amazing i'm gonna gift this uh to someone or uh maybe think about selling it in a craft fair i'm not too sure uh how i'm gonna go about with uh with um sharing this beautiful piece with another person but uh yeah you never know <laughs> so what i used with that was a yarn from yarn B, and it's a hobby lobby house brand yarn and it's called Rainbow Rhapsody, and it is in the colorway Sapphire, Sapphire Blues. And it was gifted to me, actually it was a, a yarn swap that I had done with Rose from Rose Likes Crochet. Hi Rose, how you doing? So now for knit, because those all, all those finished pieces were crochet, for knit I have works in progress. So I showcased this in uh, my past, uh, episode where I had a baby blanket on the go for my youngest niece uh, here in Canada and uh, I think I got to my first yellow uh, yellow green stripe here and I was about there so I've doubled up now so I've got I measured it and it is in uh, I guess the worked up width that I've done is around what was it? I think it was it's, uh, 12 inches and I've got another four of those because I want to make it four feet wide and what I'm going to do is uh, it's going to be utilized this way because my length right what I have on, on the needles right now is around five to five and a half feet long and then I'm going to go for uh, three and a half to four feet in width and that's how it will be used having the stripes uh, vertically and uh, yeah so it's quite a larger blanket for such a young infant so my youngest niece is just over one she's probably one one year and a couple of months uh, but uh, this blanket's gonna be overkill for such a little person and she, hopefully she'll have it around for a long time to come so a lot further to go on that project that's gonna be around for a while and uh, what I'm using, I kind of touched base on it. I'll just uh, quickly show you the bag of goodies that I'm putting into that to that um, make. And it is Willow Wheels uh, holding two strands of Willow Wheel together, uh, Willow Wheels together, and a Caron uh, Baby Soft yarn in the in the green. And I'm holding that on its own. And here are some balled up Willow Wheels as well. So Willow Wheels are a product from Willow Yarns and they're a sister company to Hirschner's so uh, I'm really finding an, a lovely sheen to those Willow Wheels products that they sell and uh, it's coming up really really soft and bouncy so I'll just show you the texture of uh, some of the the two cakes that I'm holding together so this one here I looked up the colorway it is the colorway called Nevada or Nevada Nevada yeah and um, holding them together. Then that's the uh, Caron uh, Simply Soft or Baby Soft. And then this is the Willow Wheels again in the colorway Eden held with uh, Pansy. So yeah, really, really like the, the colored textures in, in that make. And it's a little shiny. It has a bit of a halo and it's, it's coming out to be a lovely stretchy fabric. And what I'm using is a 29 inch set of circular needles and they're 5.5 millimeters and they're metal. Um, now I'm gonna add in the little clip here of the Fitzgerald sweater that I, I, I'm making. And I got to a stage last week where I was super, super happy with it. Uh, and since then I have done some extra work because I discovered uh, an interesting thing that was going on with that sweater. So I'll include the clip from last week when I was at a crucial stage of having binded, uh, sorry, binded off and so seamed together the, the shoulders and done the collar. Hey, just jumping in here real quick to talk about some of the learns that I've made along the way whilst knitting up this wonderful sweater that has been designed by Jane Allison. So the sweater is called the Fitzgerald and um, if you're also 
wanting to dabble in uh, knitting up a sweater that uses a variegated yarn like this. It's from Cascade, it's called Tangier, no affiliation whatsoever, I just wanted to show you the yarn. Um, then these things might actually help you. So I'm just gonna stand back and showcase a little bit of uh, the make from a distance. And as you can tell, it's not finished. So, oh, sorry, I just jumped at you there. But it's not finished and I have ends to weave in. I've got these little dust bunnies around here of uh, sprigs of different colors in the colorway that I'm working on. So I will talk about that. I'm just gonna lift the camera up so I'm not bent over like the hutchback of Notre Dame. Along the way, when I was cutting uh, each of the sections, I wound off an extra 20 yards balled it up and I stuck it on the sweater. So these balls have been helpful when I'm seaming up the edges. I've got then something that's of the similar color and also the collar here, like using similar color there to uh, pick up stitches. And I also am doing it for the sleeves as well. Okay, so uh, you can see how excited I was. I had got up in the morning because I was at a stage where it was needing to be completed to that point where I could be um, be happy with the, the binding off and the joining of the collar and the, I guess, making the collar up as well. So, uh, yeah, what I had done, I'm going to show you. I had an issue with the hole of the arm. Now, it was a decent size hole for... Uh, of I believe it was 18 inches all the way around and uh, yeah and there was a there was I guess no real need for me to change it uh, but I had a drop shoulder so I've never done a drop, drop shoulder sleeve before so the actual the actual shoulder of the seam opening start started here for the hole and uh, with extra I guess the 18 inches of, of opening uh, meant that um, it was starting lower down my arm. So I had this extra flab when I was doing the, uh, the sleeve that was really, really saggy. And then when I closed my arm down, there was puckering of that um, saggy pocket. So I knew what I had to do. I had to uh, reduce the hole size and you won't believe what I did but I cut the two seams here. I actually unpicked the collar first, so I got it back to just the raw, uh, I guess the raw front and back panel. And these are the two seams that originally held the front and back together here on my shoulders. And then what I did was I had just all these uh, messy bits of like fibers that were <laughs> were kind of like flailing around. They were they were then sort of sheared up and I had to get rid of like a couple of rows to get back to the basic clean stitches. So as part of like making the hole smaller, I frogged back probably around three inches of the panels. So I went all the way down to here, which meant that now the, the chest uh, piece where I had my, I guess, little v-neck was now gonna sit up here. So then I had to frog and, and savor the rest of the yarn to the point where it was, uh, say about here. So I actually frogged all the way back and then re-knit and lowered the v-neck as well to the point where just the armholes now were smaller by, I'm gonna say two and a half inches. And so yeah, here it is. I got to do the collar again. And we are back to where it was in the video where we have a really, really nice seamed finish on the front and back panels here and here. And I did a nicer collar the second time around, which is awesome because what I found with the striping was that when I had them lower down here, the striping, you couldn't see it, it was hidden by, uh, I guess, the fold on the inside. But now when I wear it, 
it's not hidden it's actually further to the edge of the of the piece so it's not in it's not in here anymore it's actually going on the outside so I fixed that up as well so now my holes are three sorry two and a half inches uh, smaller and when it drops over my shoulder like that it fits a lot nicer with with a sleeve that I haven't put it on yet but the sleeves gonna not be like this big saggy this big saggy excess bit of fabric so yeah it's gonna be a nice snug snug fit sleeve uh, originally I think the, um, the measurement from the bind off to the top part was on one side or was like nine and a half inches and I had made it seven inches so I have seven, seven, and the bind off part where the 10 uh, stitches were, that was, uh, I think, t an extra two. So 14 and two is 16, and I originally had 18 and a half, I think, of, of uh, circular. So I've taken off two and a half inches. Yeah, so really, really happy with it. It's, uh, it's worked up uh, lovely and I get to do the sleeve again. So I probably got to about half of a sleeve the, for the first go at it. Uh, but uh, I have since saved that yarn, you know, frogged it back, saved it, and now I'll use the same yarn again. And the nice part about it is that I saw what I, what I achieved with that first half sleeve and I was happy with it. So I'm gonna continue where I had um, T uh, tagged on my my two yarns that I'm blending and I'm going to continue the same blend that I had originally so that's uh, the story of the sweater and I'm really really enjoying learning all about uh, the blending the Halico or Helixco knitting which is uh, uh, switch slipping stitches uh, as you conclude the round with one yarn to begin a new yarn so you never have the same starting point it stagnates throughout the the tube and you can sort of uh, not get the the jogging of the, the color work it becomes a beautiful blend so it's time for some happy mail and I got this box last week and here, here it is here and it came from uh, one of our YouTuber friends out there. Her name is Lisa and she's from a channel called Epic Yarn Gems and oh my goodness. So just so you guys know, you don't have to send me any gifts but just know if you do, they're well appreciated and they'll uh, go to good use. So let's start with unboxing. I have unboxed it and I've written back to Lisa and said, oh my God, thank you so much for the generous gifts that you put inside the box. Um, I'll start off with the card. And what we have here is, by the way, Lisa, you have such beautiful penmanship. It is, um, I guess a hello card and it looks like someone's uh, workbench with all of the scrapbooking that uh, items that you generally see around like uh, fun paper and a picture of a cat and a butterfly so it says here hi Gary I hope you are doing well in one of your videos you mentioned that you don't have Hobby Lobby it's so true so I thought I would share some of my stash uh, thank you for that that's a real honor I hope you are um, I hope you are able to find a project to use it on I love your channel thank you I love your channel too uh, thank you for sharing your your yarn journey with all of us take care Lisa from epic yarn gems love that Lisa thank you so much and what did she put in her box was from her own stash I'm really, really, really touched. So here we have it in an organza bag and it has that wonderful Hobby Lobby smell that, uh, I don't know, it smells like a floral, almost like a floral scent. And it, I got some, I love this yarn in a solid color. So it is in the colorway amethyst. So a really nice purple color here super soft by the way and this colorway here it is called navy these are 100% acrylic really really soft great uh, 
great for like I guess garments. Uh, it's a good strong acrylic workhorse yarn, which is amazing. And this one here is uh, mid green. Really, really nice color there. And these are all four weight yarns, so uh, I think it calls for a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and a five millimeter knitting needle. Yeah, that's right. And these ones are a different, uh, I guess, collection in the I Love This Yarn. It is in the print collection. And this one to me reminds me of licorice. It's kind of a mull between greys, blacks, and kind of like a, I guess, an off-whitey gray there. And they sort of mull together in the strand. Uh, the color name of this one is called Gray Black. Very appropriate. I got two of those. One, two. And I have this one here, which is, I love this yarn as well, and it's in their metallic collection. And so it's a white base, but they twist around a Stellina thread, which is like a chrome or metallic thread. And it's soft, it's not scratchy at all. So yeah, I've got a few glittery uh, goodness from uh, from uh, other Happy Mail. So maybe I should have a, start a little section of the uh, of the glittery variety as well. That's really blowing out in the camera as well. So really, really love that. She also made me something, and she uh, put in another, I guess, item in the box here, which are these hair bubbles. And they're in a gold metallic, a, I'm gonna say granite kind of finish, and a marble effect. Uh, yeah, really, really neat thing to have. I guess I can uh, tie up my uh, skeins or use them in sort of, uh, I guess, grouping, grouping some mini skeins together or something. So that will work out nicely. She also crocheted me a uh, wristband, it looks like. I'm not too sure, but Lisa, please tell me what um, the intention of the item is. But it looks like it fits on my wrist, and maybe when I'm crocheting, I can actually put my implements here and then transfer them over onto my work as I'm working away. So maybe that's what the intention is. I love the little it's like a, a little uh, stitch, uh, like marker, stitch marker, or it could be a progress keeper. And they, it looks, I don't know whether you can see that, it looks like there are two little dog drawings in that little droplet there. Wonderful. Did you draw that yourself, Lisa? Amazing, amazing, amazing. I love them. So I'm just gonna put that over there. Uh, this week i also weekend that passed i went to celebrate my in-laws birthday party so <laughs> my brother-in-law turned 40 so new decade so we went into the backyard and uh we did the they're in our bubble now so uh his two little nieces are the nieces that i um made the the sweater for so i got i got permission and i'll include it in here the picture of my little niece wearing the sweater that I knitted her, the purple sweater. Uh, she had she had a bit of a rough day that day, but uh, when she tried on her sweater, she absolutely loved it and started parading. So, <laughs> um, happy to see that she it fits her well, and she has room enough to grow in the next two seasons that she'll be wearing it fall and winter. Maybe not carrying on to the following year. It might get a little tight for her, but if she loves it a lot, she might try and squeeze into it. I don't, I'm not too sure. Maybe it could be an annual thing that I make her a sweater every year. That would be neat. Um, yeah, so uh, when I was there, my sister-in-law went into the uh, basement and she said that she had something for me and she had to clean out her uh, stash that she had, well, not her stash, but her belongings that she had in storage at her parents' place. And she came out with two bags, this being one, and it's, I thought, oh, that's a nice little work bag. I'm wondering why she's giving that away. It's kind of, it's kind of filled with stuff. And 
look, it's filled with all of this yarny goodness. And some of them don't have labels on them. Some of them are scraps, but I don't know. I am kind of like a scrapaholic myself right now. I love busting through different yarns. And I think it's a bit of the experimental side of me as well that wants to maybe not bust open fresh yarn. Uh, I get a little bit precious with it, but when yarn has already been used up, I think I'm gonna combine these two together. I can, I can try out these two and yeah, I'm a little bit more carefree, I guess, when it comes to using, uh, you know, scrap yarn. I got this beautiful pure wool. It feels like pure wool. It's very rustic and it's in this nice color, blue color. I like that a lot. Uh, it looks to be three skeins in an old branded label of Red Heart and it's, uh, I don't know whether that's any special collection there, but it just says Super Saver and it's a little rough. So maybe pr uh, prior to them uh, doing the new style of, I guess, uh, yarn treatments that they do now with Red Heart, it's a lot softer now, but this one is like the old, the older, I guess, mixture or formula of the, of the acrylic, but it's a little rougher. And when I was speaking to her, she was saying to me that all of this stuff that she had in a storage was in a time that she was at university. I don't know, for her it might have been maybe 15 years back or 20 years back, I'm not too sure. Uh, but she said that uh, she had about a year's worth of uh, knitting and so this was what she had collected in her stash. So she wasn't using it, so I thought, awesome, I'll take it. And I have three skeins in this bag of the Claret. Same kind of variety of yarn. And I have this, it looks like homespun. Has homespun been around for a few years? Because if she's saying 20 years ago she got all, she was hooked into uh, all this yarn, then this is quite a very old homespun. Uh, and I won't pull them all out, but I've got some variegated scraps. I have some solid scraps. I have some bright, some neon scraps. Uh, what else has she got in here? Oh, different colors. They look like there's a multitude of weights here as well. This looks like a three weight. Uh, the Red Heart Savers, uh, Super Savers look uh, like they're four weight. And I got some baby yarn as well. So yeah, it's uh, an interesting little treasure trove there. I see needles at the bottom, which I won't pull out. And I see some patterns as well on the side pockets of that bag. Uh, the other thing that she gave me was another bag here and this one was part of a project that she had worked up and I've done a couple of lines just to check out whether my tension is the same as her tension so I knitted up a small part of this project that she left uh, it was like a UFO I guess uh, and here it is Oh my God, it's blowing out my camera. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna just say it looks like it to be on a 5.5 millimeter uh, set of circular knitting needles and it's just all uh, garter stitch and it looks to probably be 200 stitches going across, so maybe four foot uh, in width and she's knit up probably the same amount, four foot in, in length. So it's four by four now. And uh, yeah, I tried a, a, little, a little band going across and we're very, very similar in tension. So that's awesome. I have this little uh, uh, thread that's, or, or yarn that's attached to the piece right now. So I thought I'd talk a little bit about tension and and what was going through my mind when I've been crafting this week. So as crafters, we spend lots of time dwelling upon things while we're, you know, have our hands moving and in a repetitive motion. So it becomes more of a Zen state of, uh, of you know, meditation, meditation and letting your mind wander off in different uh, thoughts. So in this particular thought, when I was uh, trying up the blanket, 
uh, from my sister-in-law was now tension's quite an interesting thing and also the the gauge and how you hold your implements whether it be a hook or needles and I contributed to a little bit of a um, association with how you write with your with your hand so it's sort of like a similar action because you are holding a pen uh, you are also uh, moving your wrist and having movements uh, with with a pen that uh, everyone has a different style of writing so when uh, I'm thinking and translating that over to a craft with yarn and using knitting needles and crochet hook it does depend on how you hold the implement. It does depend on how much wrist movement you use and flow from uh, catching the, the yarn and sort of like threading it through either a loop or a stitch. And um, yeah, so it does come across in my mind as being something that I analyze within myself. So I'm more of a flow flicker uh, with my uh, needles and my crochet hooks. So when I kind of like enunciate with my, a movement, I'm really trying to, you know, flick at the end to make sure that uh, my body and my mind knows that that is now complete. I, I felt the tug of the, 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 the tension of the, of the finger that's holding the, the, the thread or the, the yarn and that kind of concludes and finishes off that stitch or that loop so then I go into the next uh, the next one so I'm more of a loose knitter and crocheter than I am a tighter or tense crocheter or knitter so I'm just looking at uh, how even all of these stitches are uh, across this work here that Lisa made and it's just delightful to see uh, it's almost like her writing, like all of these little pebbles and strokes that she's used uh, with within her movement. So I have uh, an, an interesting thing the other day happened to me when I was doing some rib ribbing work that when I'm putting my yarn from behind to in front and vice versa from in front to behind, I tend to relax the tension a lot. So when I pull pull apart my ribbing or stretch my ribbing, I see a lot of relaxed uh, movement within the, the stitch change up where there's little windows of holes. And uh, I really appreciate um, craftsmanship where that does not happen because I'm finding that I'm so relaxed that the, that is a little bit too much of a, of a, of a gap between the transitions for me. So I have to learn how to maybe enunciate with my hands a little differently in, in that transition period. So let me know down below if you have a tight tension or a loose tension, uh, whether you, you feel that your uh, stitches tend to slide on an angle or if you are perfectly up and down like that. Uh, just interesting to find out uh, whether you analyze your work to the point where you're studying how it all flows uh, or whether you're happy with how your stitch work is. Uh, yeah, so I'm interested. It'd be great to uh, open that up for everyone to, to talk about. And I think that's about it. So let's, uh, you know, uh, plan on catching up again next week. It'd be great uh, to showcase some of the progress on the sweater and the baby blanket that I'm making and this new uh, kind of collab work that I'm uh, starting on with my sister-in-law. I'm thinking of gifting that back to her when it's done. It'll be nice for her to uh, have the piece that she started and I'll just complete it. Uh, so it will be a collab work there. And yeah, I, I'll see you in a week's time. Bye for now.